Well, I'm left with this is George G, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Adrian Jones. Adrian, are you ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Adrian is founder and podcast host of Profound Awesomeness. He's a heart attack survivor exploring what it is to survive trauma and calamity and calamity and come out the other side. Adrian, I'm excited to have you on. Tell us a little about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. <laughs> well, thank you so much for again for having me here and giving me the opportunity to to speak with you and your listeners today. So for me, uh, a lot of what I do is driven by what you alluded to right there at the top, my heart attack. Um, I'm 53 years old and about six, seven years ago, I was mountain biking with some friends of mine uh, here locally in Northern California when I suffered a major widowmaker heart attack. Uh, my left anterior descending artery had become 100% blocked and um, I'm very lucky to be here. Uh, when I got to the hospital, they had to use angioplasty to open up that artery and put in a stent. And it's it's a great day. Every day is a great day now. And I will tell you, to answer your question, you know, why I do what I do is I used to lay in bed after my heart attack and wonder why I survived. You know, Not many get to survive the Widowmaker heart attack. And I would lay in bed and stare at the ceiling and go, why did I survive? Why do I have this second chance in life? What am I supposed to do with it? And I sent this question out to the universe, to my God, to whatever had listened to me. And the answer that came back to me uh, pretty clearly and pretty succinctly was use your story to help and inspire other people. And I did not know how to do that or how I was going to manifest that, but I, I took that calling and I'll say ran with it, if you will. How have I done that? Well, I, I didn't quite know what to do upon hearing those words. And, and that directive to, to lead my life in this way. What I did do is I, I decided I'd get out of corporate America and uh, begin, you know, start the transition of my, my career into more of the personal transformation and helping and inspiring other people's space. I started to blog, I started to write articles, started to do public talks. Like for example, got uh, I've done a few talks for the American Heart Association and about, uh, May 2021, I launched my podcast um, called Profound Awesomeness, which is a tragedy to triumph podcast about people who've been through difficult times and have come out the other side living with more meaning, intent, and purpose. And it's my goal that these stories will help and inspire and motivate other people to live their, their best lives and to see that there is profound awesomeness within each of us, regardless of our, our personal situations. So I think that really gets to like why I do what I do. I was really shaken by what happened to me six years ago. Well, it was October, 2016. So uh, you know, we're coming on seven years, um, but that really shook me to my core and, and had me reevaluate what I do, where I do it, who I do these things with. And, and I'm, I think I'm still going through that transition as we speak, as I'm working on, I got a few tricks up my sleeve in the proverbial lab, so to speak, but nothing that I can go public with just yet, but some other things that we plan to roll out in addition to the podcast that I'll be very excited to talk about probably in the next, by the end of summer. Yeah. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Uh, Pre-heart attack, were you somebody who prayed or meditated or was in touch with the universe? Nope. I mean, I, I shouldn't be so so quick and potentially callous in my resp I didn't mean it that way. Uh, uh, yes, I'd say I'm, uh, I do have an element of, of uh, faithfulness to me. I am somewhat religious. Uh, but no, did I pray um, regularly? No. Um, did I meditate? Hardly ever. This was a true awakening um, in so many levels. And I'm you know, there's a whole lot to this story, and I will just add on a tiny little bit here, in that after my heart attack, I'm still in the hospital, I had an, another awakening moment where a voice, a voice spoke to me in my ear and said, find your biological family. Hmm. So I'm, a, I'm adopted, and I went out, as a result of the heart attack, I went out and found my biological family. And they have embraced me and acknowledged me and welcomed me into their lives. In fact, where I live today, I'm about a 50 minute drive from my biological parents and three mm. sisters. Wow. Um, yeah. And it's been incredible. So 
on one hand, I have what I like to call survivor superpowers. These, these are capabilities that came with the heart attack with being able to live with more meaning, more intent, more purpose in my life, more presence. I didn't know that I could be more present than I was prior to the heart attack, which has been a wonderful offshoot of, of being a survivor. You, and I couple that with the discovery of finding my biological family and having them welcome me and embrace me into their lives. And I realized as an adoptee, I had holes within me. I never knew needed filling. They got filled in that process. So it's a very, very powerful place to be that I found myself in. And I, and I, I call it the world of profound awesomeness, just because that's all I could come up with. It, it seemed to work for me. This is how I describe the sensation. And I hope to help people find their profound awesomeness. Yeah, I love it. I think it's a, a wonderful and, and and perfect term. And what an experience. And they're so close. Amazing. There isn't one without the other. And I've had people, I mean, things have, it's just been such, so many good things have happened to me. And, and I guess I share all this, like, there have been coincident, coincidences upon coincidences upon coincidences in my heart attack and the search for my biological family. So much so, you know, I used to, to laugh and 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 make fun of the expression everything happens for a reason hmm. and I, what i have found is that things do happen for a reason and i have become awakened to that and i embrace it now and uh maybe for another show at another time i could go into like all these coincidences i know today we don't have the time but that has got me rethinking about how i think about the greater power around us um and how things are operating and is is there a god or the universe in control of something uh for us and and trying to make sense of that but uh the heart attack strangely might have been the best thing that ever happened to me which sounds crazy to say but uh given how much i learned about myself how much i've changed what i've been doing and how it led me to this whole new family of mine has been nothing short of remarkable truly yeah so how old were you when you had the heart attack? I was two days uh, before my 47th birthday. So okay. just at the end of my 46th year. Yeah. So 45-year-old Adrian Jones, if you were to tell him about all this stuff you've learned, what 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 would he have said? Would he told you to get lost? Or would he said, you know, this is interesting. Tell me more. 45-year-old me? Yeah. Yeah, he would have, he probably would have said, get lost. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I hate to say it. I think looking oh. back at myself, I, you know, I, I don't, I wasn't in that, that headspace to embrace this massive undercurrent and change that I've been launched myself into that was triggered by the, this heart attack. Um, so I think younger me or uh, age 45 year old me would have said, I don't know what you're talking about. That's, that's not part of my life. I've got, I'm dialed in on what I'm doing. I've got a career. I've got a job. I've got, I'm married with kids. I'm like, everything's great. Um, now I want to go, I really want to go back to younger me and be like, you have no idea what you're missing out on. <laughs> you don't know how plugged into life you can be. You think you're present now. Oh, just wait, you're going to get real presence really quickly here. Um, and, and, and I think that would have been, if I, if younger me would have been listening, that would have been incredibly eye opening. but I don't think I would have been listening. Yeah. Sad. You know what? That's, that's kind of the trick, right? It's, is when the student is ready, the, the teacher appears, there's all these different sayings for it. Um, like you just said, everything happens for a reason and that your younger self would have, you know, laughed at that. And today you, you appreciate that it's the truest thing in the world. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, my, my, I have a lot of friends who ask me or come up to me and say, in fact, I had a friend the other day, uh, it's, it's graduation season for high schools. We were at a graduation party and a friend came up and just wanted to check in on me. And she said to me, she goes, you know, Adrian, you know, something we don't, mm. which I thought was really powerful. I, I wasn't trying to sort of come off as someone who knows a lot of things that other people don't. We were just having a conversation, but she was alluding to the fact that I had beaten a very close brush with death and thereby I must know something. And I don't know, I suppose 
I potentially do. I, I would say it, it'd be my survivor superpowers that um, that I was able to. Well, I was gifted as a result of surviving. That I think is what I I know more of. That I wish I could share with other people, and that's something that I'm I'm working on. That I hope to be able to roll out here before Labor Day of of this year. Yeah, you know something we don't. I I I love that, and I can just see her walking up and saying that and, and just, uh, I, I, in fact, I, I would have loved to have seen that. And I love the term survivor superpower because it's a real thing. And I'm, I'm super excited to see uh, what, what you roll out, because if you can help people to not have to go through a widow maker or some form of rock bottom to get to the place where you are, how, how valuable that is. Yeah, I mean, my life purpose now is going back to me laying on the, um, on the bed after the heart attack is how can I help and inspire other people to live their lives to the fullest, to live their best selves and become their best selves. And so I, that's what I hope to do with the time I have left. So you mentioned writing, speaking, mm -hmm. um, podcasting, all these things. How has that process been, kind of finding your voice? Yeah, uh, it's evolutionary. I'll, I'll tell you that much. Uh, it, it took me a while, but not that long. I guess I should say, with my voice on the survivorship, it was understanding uh, what it means to become an adoptee, just fully embracing being an adoptee and knowing what it means to be an adoptee and some of the challenges we have um, as adoptees. I'd never really understood that before. And so once I started looking for my biological family, I found them, I waded into this whole world of adoptee advocacy. That was where I had to do some real work in terms of like, where do I stand on adoption? And, and it's a very complicated, um, situation. I mean, it's just complex though, any way you look at it and to, to be able to establish where I stand on things was really important. I mean, I don't know if people know this, but adoptees are four times more likely to attempt suicide than the general population. We're overrepresented in addiction treatment settings. Uh, and so why is that? And peeling that back, they're just, again, things for another conversation. But there, it did take me some time to establish my voice and to put things out there into the public domain on on adoption. But I'm all about advocating for people, finding their true self, being genuinely true to who they are and following their single unique foot fingerprint that they have in, in their life. And that is a process that is certainly easier said than done and... I'm grateful that there are people out there like you who are working on helping people to engage in that process and follow the steps. Yeah. Cause that's hard. It's really hard. It's really, it's, it's really, really hard. And, and when you think about all the complexities and all the priorities in our lives and all the noise and just mm, taking that, giving yourself the permission and the grace to have the space to do the, what I like to call the soul work to discover who you really are, what your purpose is, what really gets you excited, that passion that can, can really be can drive your life in, in such a richly rewarding way. I, I believe. And so if I can help people get there, uh, it, I'll, I'll just be so happy. <laughs> I love it. Well, Adrian, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you? How can they engage with you? How can they kind of keep keep in touch? Yeah, thank you so much for that. Well, we talked about it uh, at the top of the conversation. Uh, I am the host of the Profound Awesomeness prod podcast. I think that's the best way for people to reach out to me. You can go to my my website, profoundawesomeness.com, which is, um, in full disclosure, uh, we're working on it behind the scenes. It's, it's a little rudimentary, but you can get in touch with me that way. Uh, and, and I'd love to hear from you if you have a story to share or just want to get in touch. I'd be happy to hear from people. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed as much as I did, show Adrian your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to profoundawesomeness.com. It's a great website and great podcast name, Adrian. 
and check it out and stay in touch. And we'll have you back on as soon as you are ready to roll out and announce your further plans to the world, Adrian. So thank you again. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to be here today. Until next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.